it's just starting. Hi, and welcome to the USN Travel Talk again. I see we have a few people with us today. But um, USN Travel Talk is the talk we do with all our stakeholders and partners around the world to see how things are opening up how they can welcome back our you know, Nordic tourists as well, back to bulls uh, around the world. Um, the, today, we are happy to talk to Olivia from Destination Asia in Malaysia. Welcome, Hello, Olivia. Thank you, Hi. Or good afternoon, maybe it is. It's good morning in, in Scandinavia. It's good, good morning. Afternoon. <laughs> it's good afternoon in, in Malaysia, isn't it? Yes. So, it's around yeah. about 4 p.m. here and um, well the weather looks good today it's very warm it's sunny and we have averagely between 30 to 33 degrees celsius here so it's the weather is great yeah. yeah it's not too bad like i'm sitting of course in dubai and then our listeners are in you know in scandinavia we are also getting better weather in dubai here we're not so hot anymore so we're also looking at 36 37 degrees maybe sometimes 40 but uh, it's getting bearable, it is. Summer has been a little bit hot, so. And we are gonna talk a little bit about how Malaysia is opening up or how you also been actually through the whole, you know, uh, lockdown pandemic, how you preparing yourself for tourists to come back again. Mm -hmm. And um, a little bit about the progress. But for those who hasn't met you before, um, Olivia, you can maybe introduce yourself and tell a little about what you're doing in Destination Asia and, uh, what are you working on? Um, I'm from Destination Asia, Malaysia, and uh, I'm the deputy general manager here. I've joined the company ever since January 2011. So uh, it's been ever since the company started up. So we initially I started up as a leisure travel manager and uh, currently assisting Sadie as a deputy general manager in all aspects of op operational in terms of leisure, mice, uh, cruises, and um, other business segments that uh, is un that falls under the destination Asia Malaysia's uh, portfolio. So uh, basically, everything and anything un under the destination Asia Malaysia's um umbrella. Yeah. So okay, I'm happy yeah. to be here today with with you, uh, sharing information on um, how Malaysia has gone through the uh, movement control order. The control movement order and also currently we are under the recovery movement control order so um yep glad to be here yeah. excellent and it's nice that you take the time as well to come and talk with us and um you know so we can have a, a short update we know of course malaysia is not open yet for scandinavians to come down and the nordic consumers to come down but hopefully that will change, you know, moving forward towards winter as the season, our season to travel to Asia is also, you know, winter. So hopefully in 20, maybe early 2021, we can be able to, you know, visit um, uh, Malaysia again as well. So I think it's a good time to do an update at least what's how things are at the moment. And then uh, we can do an update later on when we're coming closer. We know when if we're getting a date or a month where, where things are, you know, moving towards an, an opening and we can then update on what we already have, you know, talked about as well. But um, I normally look at a little bit on numbers, of course. Yes. We have everybody is always interested in the COVID numbers, how many cases, how many recoveries and everything. Yeah. And I looked up on Malaysia and I saw that uh, at the as per today on the, what I saw of the data is that you have, what is uh, 9,397 cases, um, yes. 9,115 recovered, uh, 128 deaths, and totally active cases is 154. So you've done very well, I would yes, say. Yes, um, well, it's, it's a challenge, but I, I guess everyone understands the severity in the situation we are in, and uh, it takes a lot of, um, it's a responsibility for everyone. So, yeah. um, well, basically we went under movement control order on the 18th of March. So we have came a long way. Yeah. So, and we're excited to share our stories. Yeah. 
And I think also if you compare this to Scandinavia, I always then compare it to Scandinavia, because Scandinavia tends to also be one of those who's been, you know, doing very well. But uh, compared to that, you've done, done much better <laughs> than us, I would say, because Norway has, as today, 11,330 cases, Denmark 17,970 cases, and Sweden 84,985 cases, and Finland 8,291. So all in all, I would say you've done very well compared to that. And, and for the active cases, we're looking at three-digit numbers. Of course, uh, Finland is the lowest with 605. Sweden, we don't have any uh, numbers on active cases, actually. Uh, but on um, Denmark, we are up to 4,000. Or even Norway is close to 2,000. So definitely it's doing much better, I would say, uh, in terms of that. Um, and also have to bear in mind that you have a population of 32.4 million people, while yes. we are looking at 5.5 in Denmark, you know, uh, similar like in Norway. Uh, mm -hmm. Sweden, of course, has got 10, close to 11 million, but still, mm -hmm. again, you're looking at the larger population. Do you think that also has something to do with that you've been through SARS and probably a little bit of MERS as well earlier? So you maybe had something in place when this happened, so you maybe are more not to say used to it, but you had a kind of a rehearsal uh, some years ago. Um, it could be, yes. Yeah. Um, at the same time, also, I would say that, um, you know, for me is um, healthcare in Malaysia is not really like how European uh, countries are. Mm. So in terms of healthcare, we are very cautious because uh, unlike uh, European countries, you know, majority of the general hospitals come equipped with very much um, uh, a level of comfort. Yeah. So whereas in Malaysia, the general host hospitals, some areas are not air, air conditioned, so you have to compromise a lot on comfort. And it's yeah. not really good when it's like you're not well, you know. Yeah. So um, everyone tries to avoid and everyone plays a part into staying home, uh, try to uh, think of our healthcare professionals as, as, as well as because we know that when it comes to healthcare, we may not be in top notch of other European countries. So we have to make sure that we take on the responsibility, make sure that we, 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 do, we do not overwhelm our, host, our hospitals mm -hmm. and at the same time to really keep space for people who really need it, which is mm -hmm. the elderly and those who are with pre-existing Ill, Ill, illnesses. Yeah. So basically, you are just used to also living more cautiously or more responsible in terms of that. Because we know, of course, in Asia, you wear masks much more quicker than we do back in Scandinavia. So when someone is ill, they put on a mask not to protect, you know, to, to themselves, but more to protect others. Because, yes. you know, um, so, so I think uh, it's also that maybe that you are just used to living more responsible because you have bigger consequences if you don't. Correct, correct. Yeah, and yeah. it also plays, I mean, the, the government, our government itself um, makes sure that daily communication is uh, uh, shared to the public, you know, in, in yeah. terms of what they are doing, um, why they are doing this, the, consequen the consequences. At, at the same time, they daily share with us the uh, facts, the numbers, the data, so that we are aware that, you know, our efforts in doing, in playing our part, this is what's, what's happening right now. So at the same time, it encourages us to make sure the numbers are maintained um, at, a lower, at a low rate and yeah. at the same time, and encourages us to continue to do what we are doing. Okay, that's good. I think that's also good to know for Scandinavians coming down, you know, um, hopefully, like I said, in 2021, we'll mm -hmm. be able to visit Malaysia again, that they understand that, you know, your people are used to actually being taking all these precautions. So they don't need to think about that. It's not happening that actually it is us tourists who has to be taking, you know, more care probably and think more than, than, than yourself as well. I know that we have, um, you, you prepared a few slides as well. So we can go through a little bit on the measurements, how you've yes. been, you know, doing what's measurements been in place. Cause I think that's important for our tour operators. I know there's a few listening in, but probably a, quite a few who's going to listen afterwards. So, um, some questions will come, of course, maybe now. And then if not, I have a few questions as well along the road, sure. so yeah, do that. So, shall we just dig into the presentation? Shall I uh, put it up for you? Yeah, I'm starting it right now. Yeah, sorry, sorry. No, no, you can do. Okay, um, the, I, I'm gonna take it back to the where yeah. it started. Yeah, 
Okay, okay. so um, here is a brief uh, run through of. Um, there we go. Yeah, this is a brief run through of um, what transpired uh, in a sense of our movement control order in Malaysia started on the 18th of March, and everyone was ordered to stay at home. Our teams was working from home during that time, and uh, we were still servicing in-house clients to assist them and help them wherever possible. On the 4th of May, Malaysia went under the CMCO, which is also known as the Conditional Movement Control Order, where some businesses was allowed to operate and reopen under strict SOPs imposed by the local government. Uh, on the 1st of June, our office destination, Asia Malaysia, uh, we reopened our offices and uh, we keep our numbers down in the office where 50% was working in the office itself and 50% was working from home because we were abiding by the SOPs imposed by the local uh, imposed by the local government where we are not uh, where social uh, where physical distancing is uh, placed under uh, the SOP. And okay, I think I think someone I think someone is dealing with the presentation here, so I just uh, don't want to go back. <laughs> Yeah, so here. So uh, during the CMCO period, we see restaurants, hotels, uh, gradually we reopened for business under strict physical distancing rules. Uh, for example, wearing masks in public is a must. Uh, we have to keep a distance of between 1 to 1.5 meters of each other. Temperature checks before entering any venues. Hand sanitizers are available at all ent entrances to all the venues. Um, we also have a, uh, a, a mobile app that is uh, requested by the local government for us to download and this has to be downloaded by ev everyone entering Malaysia. So basically, uh, this is a contact tracking de uh, device and uh, they're all re required to scan in the, the QR code before entering any venues. And in the, in the app itself, there is your information available, just phone numbers, your name, and who are you living with, your parents or your partners, so that in case of any um, cases that, uh, that arises where you have been, the government is able to contact you. So this is what we have been doing since 18th of March. And okay. Our, so can I just ask you? So the QR sure. code registration is this an app? So if I was coming to Malaysia, I had to download that app before you know entering, or would they check it up on arrival as well that I had downloaded the app, or would they? They will be checking, yes, and yeah. they encourage you to download it so that yeah. you don't have to keep uh, filling in forms or writing down your names at every venues or restaurants as you en enter because you need to only update the information one off. And um, it's quite easy, and yeah. it'd be easy for you to just scan through and enter to venues. So yeah. they don't ask for your, um, um, uh, in, in, I mean, they don't ask for personal information. They just need your contact number, your name, and who, who you are traveling with. And this will be yeah. kept confidential. And yeah. af after six months, all information uh, that has been updated in the database will be removed. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, good. Hmm. It's yeah. just good to know. So yeah, it's just good for us to know. So that will be actually there will be a QR code at every restaurant or cafes or yes. you know where you're going into or a museum or whatever. So Correct. you scan that one and then you kind of register for contact tracing. Correct. Okay. And as of 10 of June, uh, we move towards the RMCO, which is the Recovery Movement Control Order. And under this new phase, interstate travel is permitted hair salons and some leisure ac activities are now al allowed and okay. 15 of july our schools reopened with uh, physical distancing in in place but they also have an option for uh, those who would, who would prefer to have their children be uh, attending online classes as as well so okay. um i think so you can choose now, if you want to do you can choose if you want to do online learning or you want to do face-to-face. -face. Correct, correct. Yeah. So they're quite flexible in these terms now. So it really gives uh, uh, par uh, a parents a peace of mind to, you know, to ensure that their children are safe and uh, before moving into uh, physical attendance in, in school. Okay. For, for when you're saying some leisure activities are allowed, what kind of leisure activities are allowed at the moment then? 
for example, um, ac activities like swimming, the pools at the hotels are open with limited numbers of people yep. in the pool at one time. Yep. And uh, per yep. person is only allowed a certain time, time frame to be in the pool. Um, of, yeah. of course, group activities like foot football or um, rug, or rugby is still not allowed. But uh, one to one okay. games like badminton or tennis that is allowed. So okay. anything that okay. involves group activities is still not allowed. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And as you have mentioned, um, the current new daily cases we have been recorded is uh, sing single digits on a daily basis. Okay, yeah, which I saw as well. So you've been, you do, like I said, you're doing very well compared to many other countries. You're... Uh, we are very thankful. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, this is a map uh, just to show that where Malaysia is, you know, as you're all aware, Destination Asia, we, have, we are in operation in, le and in 11 countries. And uh, yeah. the little circle there is where, is where Malaysia is and um, also the range of international flights that is available that into Malaysia it's itself. This will help you to plan and uh, uh, what you call to, um, to plan and to know that Malaysia is very easily accessible by international flights, yeah? yeah. Have you, do you know, can I ask you just on, on the flights, mm -hmm. is there any actually flights coming in at the moment since it's closed or do you have passenger flights coming in with like, or is on only repatriation flights? Yes, only re repartition flights and also yeah. scheduled flights in the sense that um, mm, to bring in um, uh, what Malaysians back home, like yeah. what you have said, and yeah. also maybe once a week, as as we even though we are under uh, movement recovery order, we still have flights coming in, but we are very limited, and those who are who are coming in is coming in on bis on business on yep. uh, studies uh, mm -hmm. but except for tour, uh, tourists because tourist arrivals is still not allowed in yeah okay let's okay. see I'm moving. yep and I'm, I'm moving this for you to move in. sorry That's and this idea. is to move move in as to yeah. uh, as to Malaysia, we have two parts of, of it. One is the West Malaysia, also known as Peninsular Malaysia, where Kuala Lumpur, Pang, uh, Pangkor, Penang, and Langkawi is located at. And also East Malaysia, which is which we all know, and it's called Bo Borneo. This is mm. where Kota Kinabalu, Sandakan, and Kuching is located. So now let's move on to the next slide, which will show you roughly as to how and how it will be currently as you enter Malaysia and with all the SOPs in place. So we have, we have worked with our tourism bodies very closely to have this video for you so that you can envision how is it like traveling from the airport as you touch down right up to your check-in at the hotels. Okay, I'll start the video. Thank you. But before we begin our venture, let's go through some new traveling essentials. If you've traveled before, you are definitely familiar with going through security checkpoints and immigration. This time, however, there is an extra step because tourism stakeholders care for your well-being. Don't forget to always have a face mask on, practice social distancing, constantly check if you're feeling well, and always sanitize your hands. As we do our part, tour guides, travel operators, dive operators, hotels and resorts will do their part by taking extra steps to ensure our safety. Tour guides, travel operators, dive operators, hotels and resorts will do their part by taking extra steps to ensure our safety.
And the next slide, what we have is um, as we partner with a lot of hotels to work towards um, to fight the uh, current pan uh, pandemic, uh, we would like to also share with you how our hotels right now is uh, going through the SOPs imposed by the local government each and every time you have a check-in. So uh, okay. this slide will show you a video of one of our partners, how a uh, housekeeping is being done at the property. So this will be basically how housekeeping is done in all properties or all yes. hotels around. It's just a, yes, a kind of a show. Yeah, I'll get the video playing again. Thank you. And we get back to the slides as well for you. Yes. So that we saw of the um, SOP in place for housekeeping at the hotels. And we spoke about uh, contact tracing just, uh, just a while ago mm -hmm. on how QR code is being used, temperature checks and all. So this is basically the next slide, which is the uh, a video on um, how is it like an entering to any venues here in Malaysia right now. A face mask is re required, temperature check is re required, sanitizing of hands is required before you, en you enter, and also mm -hmm. the uh, QR code scanning, which is our contact tracing app. So if okay. you can play the video. So you, actually, yeah, so you actually have an automatic, like you do yourself, because I know here in Dubai, we have a person who takes it, or you got gates, you go through like, you know, these things in the airport. But I can see you've done it more efficiently. So you have actually um, where you do yourself and you can see, is the, will that be kind of registered that temperature into your, um, or somewhere? Yes, it can be. Um, this is uh, initially everyone is, I mean, we don't, we, we, we have the temperature check where, where someone holds the uh, temperature, um, the temperature gun we, we call it yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. yeah so we have that in the initial stage and then currently this is now available where yeah. uh temperature can be taken if you place it close to your forehead your yeah. the tip of your fingers or the tip of your uh wrist on the waist yeah. Yeah, so it's, it, it's very much depends on uh what's your uh, comfortable level yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah, so as you can play that, then we'll be able to see how is it done here. And yeah. uh, slowly moving forward where this self-temperature check will be available at, at venues. Okay, okay. We started with this so we can see. Yes.
So. So that, yeah, so that is actually basically, so this will be even at museums and, you know, sightseeing points maybe as well, where there's lots of people and in the future. Yes, and also rest, restaurants. Uh, we even have them available at uh, our night night markets, where uh -huh. one ent entry point, you have uh, uh -huh. all these available for, for you. So um, as we move forward, this this will be this should be available in all venues and all because currently there are some venues who still have people taking your tem your temperature. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that that's getting also more efficient and also like I said, it's easier to just scan the app or scan the QR code and you know that it's it's more you know also reliable in one way that you don't know if papers goes missing or if it's yeah. the wrong things and everything. Yeah. So I think yes, it's, very, it's very good. It's very efficient, I must say. Um, it, then, it's, it feels safe as well. Yes. Uh, the next slide we'll we'll see uh, physical spacing in rest in restaurants. So uh, rest restaurants uh, our capacity now is uh, very much depends on the um, the the standard dis distancing uh, that is allowed by the local government in their SOP, which is between 1 to 1.5 meters. So um, last time where we have venues that can accommodate 100 people at one time, now would probably be able to only, I mean, will only be able to accommodate uh, maybe 40 people. And mm. also very much depends on the uh, table layouts because, for example, if you have a table uh, big enough for 10, it may be only now be big enough for 5. Yeah. So, so uh, this distancing during dining also is uh, very much re required as per SOP, and uh, this distancing between tables is also a mm -hmm. uh, uh, very much in place. Uh, some restaurants, as you can see from the slide, they even have uh, uh, screens in, in between the tables. So yeah. uh, we 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 do take this very seriously, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have that. I can see that as well. Like we were out eating uh, yesterday here in Dubai as well, and on the restaurant, and they had like a plexiglass screening in between the tables yeah. as well, and um, or else in the middle row there were like three rows of tables, but the middle row is not occupied. So you have these, uh, you know, so it's not sitting next to each other in terms mm -hmm. of that. So. I can see that a lot. And also I can see that you are maybe keeping one space, you know, empty in between when there's this long rows of uh, tables. Correct. Well, yeah. Which you can't physically distance. Okay. Um, yeah. And here is a, uh, the next vi video is um, one of our partners that we work with very closely, which is the Borneo Sunbear Conservation Center. They have kindly uh, made a video specially for this uh, for this talk to share oh, with nice. everyone um, how is it like right now when you en enter to a uh, to a tour venue or a tourist at attraction site of, of course the uh, Borneo Sunbear Conservation Cent Center is um, a uh, rehabilitation cent center for sun for sun bears uh, mm -hmm. But they also uh, make make sure that all necessary SOPs are being taken place. So you will be able to see how is it like now, um, are very similar to other uh, sightseeing venues. Yeah. Okay. Is 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 these kind of uh, venues open at the moment, or are they still closed? Yes, or they are they open. Do? They are yeah? open right now. Yes. Okay. I'll start a video, and then I might have questions afterwards.
6.5 so may sejahtera di sini dan sanitizer thank you hai yang malam malam kian dua ke Malaysia sih ada juga naikkan ya ini kita sudah pintu masuk ya Sorry, can you repeat your question? I think I um. I, I, I will repeat. Yeah, yeah. I was on the Sorry. Uh, no, no. I was just asking about some bears because is that an indigenous animal to Borneo itself, or yes, specifically yeah. to the Borneo re region? Yes. Okay. And are they extinct or are they? Um... um, I'll be talking about the Borneo sun bear in a little bit. So yeah. yes. Um, well, the thing, yes, let's move on to the next slide first, then we can yeah. move on to our, uh, our bonus sunburst. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so these are uh, our SOP measures in place uh, for destination Asia, not only um, a Malaysia, but as a group uh, where our drivers are to wear face masks throughout, you know, uh, guides as, as well, and to ensure that uh, to maintain the uh, physical dis distancing from the passengers. Every vehicle will be sanitized, disinfected after every transfer, so after every pro after every program. Uh, just, just to give you an idea uh, on what we are doing for our current SOP is, is that, for example, uh, for a 40-seater coach, uh, we will now only limit up to a 20-passenger uh, en entrance. So some seats will be marked and will not be used. So that passengers have um, uh, ample or physical dis distancing, and <clears throat> when travel res resumes, uh, destination Asia Malaysia will be su supplying antibacterial wet wipes for our passengers. Uh, that is apart from the hand sanitizers that will be uh, available on board the uh, I mean uh, on board the vehicles, uh, mm -hmm. and to, and the drivers are to be. I mean, for the drivers and guides to make sure that yeah, they report yeah. immediately for any passengers dis displaying sim symptoms, yeah? Uh, yeah. Of course, right now, we do foresee that smaller uh, group tours would be uh, uh, very much coming into place now, yeah? yeah. So this Can is, I just uh, ask hmm? you a little bit on the, on the excursion? Sure. That means also, of course, there will be less space because you're now basically halving all your excursions. So when you're opening up, there will be... Um, 50% of your seats, you know, available. So that will mean that for tour operators and travelers selling trips to Malaysia, it would be probably beneficial for them to book 
um, you know, as many as, you know, the known at least excursions beforehand for the clients. Like before, yes. before the pandemic, many people went like, oh, well, I'll wait and see and I'll find out if I'm doing something or not doing something. But of course, now there will be less space. So of course, there'll be less people traveling in the beginning as well. But still, again, there will be less vehicles available and less, you know, um, space available as well. So, um, that could be something for maybe tour operators and travel agents to have in mind that it's good to do their bookings or, or at least try to sell maybe some of these excursion, which, you know, if they know that the clients really want to do this, you know, if they really want to go on some of the excursions, they should pre-book it to ensure yes. that. You are, uh, you are right. Uh, this also ap applies to restaurants. You know, now res restaurants have to limit their, their dining space as as well so um it is always best to book in advance yeah can you also book can you also book if you have a travel agent who has maybe you know a family of four and there is a couple of restaurants maybe they want to see or go to or you know they want to go out for a nice meal one one evening is that something you can do as well so you can book a restaurant for them too yes we can do concierge service yes okay no problem okay yeah I was just checking so they know as well when they're listening that they can uh, ask you even for that. Correct. Yeah. So the next slide, um, you know, with all this thing is happening, I guess it really gives us time to sit and reflect, you know, as we start to move for forward, what is our role coming into when we talk about uh, sustainability and social responsibility? Mm -hmm. uh, currently, Destination Asia Malaysia is working towards being Travel Life certified. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I have mentioned uh, earlier, we, have all, we are also working with, with a supplier to provide sustainable wet towelettes that yep. leave no ne negative impact to the environment. And it's, anti and it's antibacterial which will come in, in use when you are traveling. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And it's 100% biodegradable. Okay. Um, and for every pack of towelettes, our supplier donates a portion of their sales proceed to the Polar Bear International Fo Foundation. So this is part of uh, what, what we can do as we move forward towards uh, opening our borders up. Mm. And at the same time, we are also working very closely with our Bonus Sunbear Conservation Cent Center through mm. bear adoption pro programs. Uh, as we all know, during... Um, the MCO, the, the movement control order, know that all venues are closed. So um, as Destination Asia Malaysia has been su supporting the Bono Sunbear Conservation Cent Center um, have been like three, three years now, this really helps the center to ensure that we have enough food for the animals, the shelter are being kept, and the necessary veterinary su supplies for to the sun bears are still con continuously so uh, mm -hmm. currently destination asia malaysia have adopted two uh two bears which is called mm -hmm. damai and mom mom tom and this these two bears have recently been released back to the wild which we are very proud we are very happy and okay. we are working towards uh, adopting our third sun sun bear okay so this is something that we would like to share and 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 encourage everyone to adopt a bear yeah yeah so I know, of course, that, you know, social responsibility or CSR are important, of course, to Destination Asia as an organization and also to Malaysia. So what kind of projects are you currently? So you've got the Sun Bear, which is you know, one of the projects. Mm -hmm. Do you have other projects as well you are currently involved in? Yes, um, we, we try, if we, if we were to move on to the next slide, if we can. Yeah. Yeah. So apart from uh, su supporting our partners like to adopt adopting a sun, a sun bear or, or to make sure that our suppliers uh, uh, con contributes towards a foundation, we also have other uh, social responsibility that we would like to offer our, our travelers that is to build local engagement into our, our tours and into our, pro into our programs. For example, Destination Asia Malaysia is the ground handler for the Eastern and Oriental Ex Eastern and Oriental Express train. So we work to, together close closely to bring the passengers from the train into a local village and to work together with 
them in supporting the local community through their programs. Okay. You can see from the from the first picture. Yeah. yeah. So local engagement, um, learning the culture. Uh, this would very very much help the local community and at the same time very rewarding to the passengers as well. Um, mm. Next to also note is that um, another um, part of our uh, social responsibility is to work with um, our so um, his name is Matt is Matthew. He's sixty six year old pro professional sape play player. So uh, and also a maker and a teacher. So some of our programs we we would like to bring our clients our customers into his home to showcase the making of the sape and how it is being played to get to know him to have a lunch um, uh, uh, i mean to have lunch in his home and have him play host to our passengers i mean to our uh, to our customers so apart from um helping the sun bears or being part of a found foundation we like to immerse our clients into our local culture and our uh, local community so we so that you can bring back uh, the memories and things to talk about when you're home yeah so yes. this is part our um, our approach to sustainability and also uh, social responsibility yeah and um, then we are coming soon to an end as well and as you said we have um, you have some um, newsletter, I think the Asia talk, which most of the travel agents are getting. And of course, you got the, we got the hub as well, which people can. And then I know I got maybe Jonas here on, on there and uh, he's listening in as well. And, uh, you know, Jonas for all the travel agents listening in later on, Jonas will be able to provide you with a login as well to the hub if you want to have a look at how it works. And that's where you got all the itineraries and your brochures and videos and pictures and everything. So, and of course your update on LinkedIn and on Facebook, I know as well. And Jonas will of course be the one who's in contact with all the travel agents. Um, in, in Scandinavia and the Nordic as well. So that's, that happens. So I think that was um, a bit of an update on, on things. Um, thank you, Olivia, as well. Um, I know we don't have too many uh, people on the line today, but I think um, we managed to get around most of the things anyway um, on the questions. Like I said, the only thing I maybe before we ending off here mm -hmm. is that if travel agents wants to be, you know, taking part in some of the CSR projects you're doing, is that any possibility for them to do that? So if they maybe have a group who wants to do some of the CSR or maybe contribute or do something, can they do that? Yes, depending on where you are at, which part of Malaysia, let us know how many people you have. Is it going to be a group activity or is it going to be a couple uh, a couple kind of activity? So let let us uh, uh, let us propose and curate for for you. Okay, excellent. So the tour operators can approach us and ask for a special on these CSR, maybe for the sun bears and yes. or something like that as well, or how maybe they can contribute in adopting a sun bear or something. Yes. Okay, excellent. And thank you again, Olivia, for taking time out of your schedule and your day as well to come and update us. And hopefully we can talk to you later when we know there is an update on when we can come and visit you as well. I think that would be great. But I think for now we got um, a short overview of what's happening in Malaysia, how things are, yes. how you are you know, maintaining the situation, how good you're actually maintaining the situation with all the measurements in place. Thank you. Um, and, um, and I hope that we soon can come and see you good um, if you yeah. have any questions or if you want to have a separate uh, call on chat or uh, you know on zoom or uh, my Microsoft teams on the products that we have you know just feel free to contact me I'll be happy to do, to do one um, yeah. Yeah. we don't I mean even though there is a time di difference it makes much it, it it doesn't make much of a difference to be very honest you know no. so yeah so let let us know we'd we'll be happy to have you all back again uh, yeah. be it for honeymoon be it for an escape away you know or be it for a family gathering i mean we'll be happy to have you back excellent and thank you again olivia for doing this and thank you. Uh, like i thank said you hopefully we'll see you again thank okay. you have a nice right. evening bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.